All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I'm Anuja Kumar. The headlines. Polling begins for second and final phase of assembly elections in Gujarat. Voting also underway for by polls to Manpuri Lok Sabha seat and six assembly constituencies in five states. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to inaugurate two-day National Office Bearers Meeting of BJP in New Delhi today. Millet's Smart Nutritive Food Conclave being held in National Capital today. External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar to hold talks with his German counterpart Annalena Baerbock in New Delhi today. Manu Bhakar and Sarab Jot Singh clinch mixed team pistol title at National Shooting Championship in Bhopal. And in football, England and France enter quarterfinals of FIFA World Cup in Qatar. And now the news in detail. Polling has begun for second and final phase of assembly elections in Gujarat. Voting, which began at 8 this morning, will conclude at 5 p.m. Voting is taking place for 93 constituencies spread over 14 districts including Ahmedabad, Vadodara and Gandhinagar. A total of 833 candidates, including 69 women, are in the fray. Prominent among them are Chief Minister Bhupendra Patel and seven of his cabinet colleagues. Other BJP leaders in the fray include Hardik Patel and Alpesh Thakur. Congress leaders Sukram Rathava and Jignesh Mavani and Aam Admi Party leaders Bharat Singh Vakhala and Bhima Bhai Chaudhary are also contesting in this phase. The Election Commission has made elaborate arrangements to ensure free and fair polling. Over 26,000 polling booths have been set up. State Chief Electoral Officer P. Bharti has appealed the people to vote in large numbers. The counting of votes will be taken up on the 8th of December. Now we go over live to our correspondent Sushil Chandra Tiwari in Vadodara. Sushil, how is the polling progressing there? Well, Anuja, I am at Shivam School Polling Station, which is in uh, Vadodara City constituency. And it is very interesting to see that people have already arrived at polling stations. Polling has just begun, but we were able to see long queues of voters at almost two or three polling stations, which we visited in the morning. People have come early to cast their vote. It is very interesting to see the enthusiasm of the voters here. And the Vadodara City is important because it has 10 seats. Manisha Vakil, woman and Child Development Minister uh, of the state is uh, contesting from this seat, Vadodara city seat. Anuja? Sunil, oh, what is the significance of the second phase of polling there? Well, Anuja, 93 seats are going for poll today. These seats are spread over North Gujarat and uh, tribal areas of Panch Mahal and Chota Udaipur also and the industrial and uh, urban areas like uh, Ahmedabad and Vadodara. So these seats are very important. All political parties have high stakes in this phase. These are the areas like Sabarkatha, Banas Katha, Anand, which scripted the uh, white revolution and the growth of cooperative sector in the country. And they also paved way for the women empowerment in Gujarat. So they have very strong political knowledge and they have always favored for the growth of Gujarat. So this phase of election is very important for formation of new government in Gujarat. Anuja? Thank you, Sushil, for that update. Now we go over live to our correspondent, Aparna Kund, in Ahmedabad. Aparna, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will cast his vote in Ahmedabad. What latest update do you have for our listeners? Anuja, I'm standing here outside Nishant High School in Rani area of Ahmedabad. The area comes under Sabarmati Assembly constituency and Prime Minister Narendra Modi is a registered voter of this very constituency. All the eyes are on this polling booth from where PM Modi will cast his vote in a short while from now. A lot of enthusiasm is seen among people, especially the young ones. Hundreds of people have gathered on both the sides of the road just to greet PM Modi. Elaborate security arrangements have been made in view of PM's visit here. Apart from PM Modi, Home Minister Amit Shah, Chief Minister Bupendra Patel will also cast their votes in Ahmedabad today. Anuja, out of the total 93 assembly constituencies that are going for polls today, the highest 21 seats are located in Ahmedabad district. And more than 60 lakh registered voters are there from Ahmedabad district alone, which tells us the significance of Ahmedabad in Gujarat's political scenario. Anuja. 
Thank you, Aparna, for that update. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has urged the people to vote in large numbers for the second phase of Gujarat Assembly elections. In a tweet, Mr. Modi specially urged the young voters and women to vote in large numbers. The Prime Minister informed that he will be casting his vote in Ahmedabad this morning. Polling has also begun for by-elections to Manpuri Lok Sabha seat and Rampur and Khatoli assembly constituencies in Uttar Pradesh. By-polls to Padampur assembly seat in Odisha, Sardar Shahir in Rajasthan, Kurni in Bihar and Bhanu Pratapur in Chhattisgarh are also underway. The counting of votes will take place on 8th of December. Around 50.47% voter turnout was recorded in the elections to the 250 wards of Municipal Corporation of Delhi or MCD. Delhi State Election Commission has said that barring a few stray incidents of model code of conduct violations and a couple of other scattered incidents of impersonation, the polling remained peaceful throughout the day and no untoward incident of any kind was reported from anywhere. A total of 1,349 candidates are in the fray for the MCD elections. The counting of votes will take place on Wednesday. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will inaugurate the two-day National Office Bearers Meeting of BJP at party headquarters in New Delhi today. He will also address the party office bearers and provide guidance to them. The BJP in a statement said that the Prime Minister will immediately leave for New Delhi to attend the party's National Office Bearers meeting after casting his vote at Ahmedabad in Gujarat Assembly polls today. The meeting will be presided over by BJP President J.P. Nadda. In the meeting, future strategies of the party will be discussed along with reviewing of preparations for the upcoming Assembly elections in some states next year. Discussion will also take place from booths, committees, to various organizational activities of the party. President Rabdi Murmu has said the Indian Navy has a huge responsibility of ensuring an umbrella of security for national maritime interest. She was addressing the operational demonstration program held on the occasion of Navy Day at Vishakhapatnam in Andhra Pradesh yesterday. President Murmu yesterday inaugurated and laid the foundation stone of several development projects. During her visit to Andhra Pradesh, the President attended several events. Today, President Drabdi Murmu will visit Sri Padmavati Mahila Vishwa Vidyalayam, where she will interact with students, faculty members and women achievers. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Welcome back. To promote the export of millets, the government is organizing a day-long Millet Smart Nutritive Food Conclave in New Delhi today. The conclave is a pre-launch event of the International Year of Millets 2023, organized by Ministry of Commerce and Industry through its Apex Agriculture Export Promotion Body and Agricultural and Processed Food Products Export Development Authority. Union Minister for Commerce and Industry, Piyush Goyal, will be the chief guest at the conclave. At the first of its kind millets conclave, the government will release an e-catalogue on 30 potential importing countries and 21 millet producing states of India. In a bilingual live phone-in program public speak at 9.30 p.m. tonight, we will bring you a live discussion on importance of millets and millets promotion initiatives with our experts Dr. D.K. Yadav, Additional Director General Seed, Indian Council of Agricultural Research and R.P. Singh, Additional Commissioner Crops, Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers' Welfare. Listeners can ask questions to the experts on benefits and nutritional value of millets, government initiatives to boost millet production, consumption and exports, environmental impact of millet production and significance of celebration of International Year of Millets 2023. Listeners can ask the questions from 9.30 p.m. onwards on telephone numbers 011-2371-7106 and 011-2331-4444. You can also post your queries on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts by hashtag Ask AIR. This live program can be heard on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies. This program will also be available on our website, newsonair.nic.in, and on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. 
The G20 Sherpas have extended their support to India's G20 presidency and said that they will contribute in pushing forward the agenda that will be put forward today at the Sherpas meeting in Udaipur, Rajasthan. Talking to AIR News, co-Sherpa of Indonesia, Dian Jani, expressed confidence that India will fight for the interest of developing countries. He said India and other countries which are a part of G20 should work together to achieve the sustainable development goals. External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar will hold talks with his German counterpart Annalena Baerbock in New Delhi today. Ms. Baerbock is on a two-day visit to India beginning today. External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Arinda Bakchi said that the two leaders will discuss various bilateral issues. During her stay in Delhi, she will be hosted by External Affairs Minister for bilateral talks. They will, of course, hold discussions on bilateral issues as well as regional and global issues of mutual interest. As strategic partners, India and Germany have had a long-standing relationship underpinned by common values and shared goals. In fact, in 2021, we commemorated 70 years of the establishment of diplomatic relations. This year, we have had several high-level engagement between the two countries, including Prime Minister's visit to Berlin. On to sports. In shooting, Manu Bhakar and Sarab Jodh Singh won the 10-meter air pistol mixed team title at the 65th National Shooting Championship competition at the MP Shooting Academy range in Bhopal yesterday. The Haryana duo trounced Karnataka's Divya TS and Imro's 16-4 in the gold medal encounter. In the FIFA World Cup football, England Wall has comfortably defeated Senegal 3-0 at the El Bait Stadium, Al Khor, Qatar, last night to set up a quarter-final clash with France on Saturday. Earlier, France stormed into the quarter-finals after defeating Poland 3-1 in the knockout match at the Al Tumama Stadium, Doha. A report. <laughs> With a 3-0 win over Senegal in the round of 16 phase of the FIFA World Cup 2022, Harry Kane-led England side has set a date with defending champions France. Kylian Mbappe star of France will meet England in the quarterfinals of the Qatar World Cup on the next Sunday. Goals from Jordan Henderson, Bukayo Saka and Harry Kane have secured England's 3-0 win. Most important aspect of the game was Harry Kane and his goal drought at the Qatar World Cup. Kane has now netted 11 times at major tournaments, overtaking Gary Linkers as England's all-time top scorer in those competitions. But at the tender age of 19, it is Bellingham who has emerged as England's driving force. In another match, Mbappe struck twice as France defeated Poland 3-1 to qualify for quarterfinals. However, a late Robert Lewandowski penalty saw Poland salvage some pride. With Pratyush Ghosh, Anupam Mish, Sports Desk. Today, in the another round of 16 match, Japan will take on Croatia at the El Genob Stadium in Qatar at 8.30 p.m. Indian time. And now, for an overview of today's newspapers, it's over to Renu Kataria. Thank you, Anuja. As the Sherpas from 40 countries gather in Udaipur for the G20 meet, Hindustan Times writes about the Prime Minister's efforts to evolve a political consensus on India's goals during its first presidency, chairing a meeting with heads of all major parties under the headline, PM to brief leaders on G20 at all party meet. Expecting the worst still to come in Delhi, the Indian Express says, construction demolition ban in Delhi as AQI turns severe. And finally, the Tribune reports about the much-awaited aerial connectivity under the headline, Fly from Shimla to Kullu Dharamshala from December 9. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Polling begins for second and final phase of assembly elections in Gujarat. Voting also underway for bipoles to Menpuri Lok Sabha seat and six assembly constituencies in five states. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to inaugurate two-day National Office Bearers meeting of BJP in New Delhi today. Millet's Smart Nutritive Food Conclave being held in National Capital today. External Affairs Minister Jay Shankar to hold talks with his German counterpart Annalena Baerbock in New Delhi today. Manu Bhakar and Sarah Jodh Singh clinch mixed team pistol title at National Shooting Championship in Bhopal. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.